Are you a radio ham wanting to use the International Space Station's new repeater system? Then stay tuned, I'll tell you how. Welcome to the Ham Radio Junkie, with me, Keith. If, like me, you believe the world isn't flat, you'll also accept that there's an International Space Station that is flying around at 5 miles per second above our heads, orbiting the Earth every 90 minutes. And if you're a radio ham, you also know that on board the International Space Station is some great radio equipment that's used to communicate with schools, colleges and educate children about space and also amateur radio. There's also other amateur radio equipment on board, such as a repeater system. Basically, it turns the International Space Station into a great satellite that we can use to communicate over vast distances. And this is it. The repeater is based on a Kenwood VHF UHF radio with crossband repeater function. It's available to all radio amateurs who fall within the footprint of the International Space Station as it's passing over. It requires very little power to operate it and also some very, very simple equipment. So how does it work? Well, it's very similar to any other repeater. The only exception is on this one, you transmit on two meters on 145 megahertz and receive on 70 centimeters on 437 megahertz. So I can hear you saying, that's great, Keith. I want to get on there, but what do I need? Well, you need a way of tracking the International Space Station to know where it is. You need a dual band FM radio, VHF and UHF, or you need a VHF and a UHF FM radio. You need some sort of antenna, and then you also need to know your location. I'll tell you why in a minute. So how do we track the International Space Station? There are various programs available, but for me, visit amsat.org.ar. The Argentinian branch of AMSAT. AMSAT help radio amateurs around the world communicate via satellite, and they've got a web-based satellite tracking program that you can use to track any satellite and also the International Space Station. So let's look at radios. Any radio capable of transmitting on 2 meters FM and receiving 70 centimeters on FM would do absolutely fine. And to keep things simple, what you need to do is program five channels into your radio with the frequencies shown on the chart. You'll notice that the receive frequency changes by 10 kilohertz this is due to a thing called the Doppler effect and it only affects the receive signal as the transmit signal is negligible. Because of the Doppler effect, we need to shift the channels up and down during the pass of the space station to make sure we continue to hear the stations that are coming in on the downlink of the repeater. So let's talk about antennas. Don't use a rubber antenna there on your handheld, it's not going to work. The best option is a beam. This is a handheld arrow antenna. It's a 70 centimeter and two meter dual band antenna that you can hold in your hand and point at the satellite or the International Space Station. A dual band handheld beam is ideal for work in the International Space Station. And this is Peter, 2M0SQL, who's out and about working satellites with his. There's lots of choice and here's another one. This is a simple 2 meter and 70 centimeter handheld beam. Failing that, if you've got a dual band collinear or a white stick antenna, you can also use that. It's not ideal, but it will work, although you may not hear the complete pass of the International Space Station. So the last thing you're going to need is to know your grid square. You need this so you can pass it as part of the contact that you make through the International Space Station. The way to find this, if you don't already know it, is visit qrz.com forward slash grid mapper. Put your details in and it will give you a precise grid square for your location. Now QSOs via satellites and the International Space Station are slightly different to a normal QSO that you'd have on HF. And the reason for this is that the pass of the International Space Station is very, very short. And there may be a lot of people all trying to pass details to other stations and make contact. So the QSO normally is limited to your call sign, 
the signal strength or readability of the other station, your grid square locator and your name. And that's generally it. This way lots of stations can make contact in a very very short amount of time. So there you have it. That's how you work the International Space Station's new repeater. Come to think of it, that's how you can work any of the satellites. Again, look them up via AMSAT UK or any of the other AMSAT branches and go out and have some fun working satellites. If you like my stuff, give me a thumbs up. My name's Keith, my call son is G0FEA and I'm the Ham Radio Junkie. I'll catch you next time.